We were more prepared as a coaching staff. Our players were certainly more prepared after seeing what Clemson really looked like a year ago. Um, and we were anxious to play, eager to play, and believed uh, we could win. And again, a handful of plays, a handful meaning five or six plays, uh, were the difference in the game. And to Clemson's credit, they made those plays. Uh, ETN was. Uh, very difficult to tackle and was probably uh, the difference in the game. Maybe a turnover by us and an interception in the end zone uh, for them. A couple things just, uh, uh, we need to make those plays and it goes right to the end. And that was, uh, I liked our conditioning, I liked our toughness, I liked our resiliency, I liked our execution. Um, but a handful of plays was the difference, which is a significantly different story than a year ago. Um, and that's that's how I see it. Bronco, uh, Jim Davis announced earlier tonight that you were without seven players and a full-time assistant coach. Can you tell us especially which coach you were without? And I don't know if you're comfortable identifying the player. No, um, our our policy is going to be uh, we'll be transparent with the numbers, but we're not going to be transparent with the names. Um, I'd like to protect their privacy, and so that's going to be our policy going forward. Um, and again, we hadn't had any positives since the players returned, and uh, yeah, hit us by surprise. Uh, and then again, there's there's players that are testing positive, and then there's contact tracing as well. So that's been our first um, experience with that. And, and how that's uh, being managed. Did you get those, uh, those results Wednesday, or when, when did you learn this? Um, we, we got our results uh, from Wednesday's test, and it took a long time uh, by about midnight Thursday night. So just barely before our test on Friday. And game plan and workload was already done by then. So. Um, yeah, it was a long turnaround for whatever reason uh, with those results. You know, it, it didn't take the air out of our sails. It just was, um, we, we kept trying to close within that two-score margin, you know, and, and um, great teams have great players who make plays at the right time. And a one-handed interception in the corner of the end zone uh, was a great play uh, by a Clemson player that, uh, yeah, those are the kind of plays that uh, help you get into playoffs and help you win national championships and help you have really good programs. So. Really nice play by that, that corner. How much did the intercept, the, the, the timeout situation in the first half push in, push in a fine um, for the rest of the half? You know, really, really not that much. So here's, here's the, the simple thought behind that is, is Clemson is hopeful to have shock and awe right from the beginning, you know, and put you on your heels and never let you recover. And I, I was absolutely willing to use timeouts to slow the pace, to make sure our guys were ready, and they were. And so, yeah, uh, um, that was absolutely um, something that we, we, I would do again and was prepared to do just because of how fast and how explosive and how usually they jump out on teams so quickly and uh, looking to stall and, and use them if we needed to and I believed we needed to. Thank you. Yep. Oh yeah, it was it was a, a challenge the entire game defensively, uh, and uh, either through tackling or um, uh, Clemson's receivers making plays, or Trevor Lawrence scrambling, or screens to jersey number nine. Right, they have really good players and they're really well coached. 
Um, and they just were one step ahead or in terms of making the plays they needed to on third and long, which is atypical. We're normally very good on third down, but that shows the difference. We work to adjust. We work to blend. We work to, 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 um, to try different things. Uh, they out-executed us on third down um, really pr pretty consistently throughout the game. Uh, say it one more time, please. This environment. Um, how would you say Brennan uh, acquitted himself uh, in this environment? You know, obviously not a full a packed house here, but still 20th out and something. Um, you know, a team that's won multiple national championships. Yeah, it didn't phase him. Brennan's tough mentally and physically, and the stage wasn't too big. Uh, the team wasn't too good. He's, I was really pleased with his mindset, his execution, his effort, his leadership. He did a nice job. Missed opportunities, uh, we're capable of tackling better with better angles and better concentration. And so uh, Clemson is a, a superior opponent. And so uh, our reactions, our sharpness um, for what, what was needed a week ago uh, was about a step off or a step delayed um, and just not quite right today. Um, and it was addressed repeatedly right from the beginning um, but our execution just didn't hold the way we needed it to on third down. Do you attribute the, the tackling difference to this being week two? You haven't had a lot of time. You didn't have spring. You didn't have all no. the No. No, there's no, no excuse other than he's a great running back. There's, 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 no, there's nothing other than giving him credit. And, and uh, he did a really nice job. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's anything other than that. Yeah, I think Billy's one of the best practice players in our in our program. All the way from the minute he he showed up for this season, every single day he hustles, he works, he catches, he competes. He hustles, he works, he catches, he competes. He hustles, he works, he catches and competes. It looks just like practice. Uh, he's he's really um, really done a nice job. Sure. Um, you look to improve against any opponent you play in each exposure that you get. And, uh, but we had higher expectations and we were, yeah, we, we came to win the game. You know, we didn't come just for benchmarks and we didn't come to be better than what we were. Um, however, again, statistically, it was a balanced game. There's a handful of plays we didn't make. And to take another jump or to win the ACC or to become um, an elite program, those plays have to be made, and they're one-handed interceptions, right? There's a quarterback making someone miss in the open field. There's a screen play and a running back breaking three tackles and going, right? Those are the kind of plays that um, is the next tier. And, and so, uh, but I liked our conditioning. I liked our resilience. I liked our toughness. I liked our mindset. The, the game was a completely different game than a year ago, um, and they're not comparable. It's a funny question. I'm sorry. Uh, I think he's one of the best players in college football. Um, he showed his talents today. And I, I, have a, I have a lot of respect for him and what he does. Um, you know, there's a lot of plays that we left on the field that we had him in a position that we wanted him to. But using what, his athleticism, his game, um, he, he made it for himself. He got out of the situations that we had him in. and. Uh, we need to be we need to be better at tackling, uh, pursuit to the ball. I'm uh, really just wrapping up. There's a lot of just missed tackles. I feel like as a team, where we, it looked like we had him, uh, but he made a play out of nothing. And yeah, Etienne is just a really good player. He's a t high caliber player, and he had a hell of a game today.
I was I felt comfortable about that. Um, you know, going into half, we're only down by two touchdowns. We get the ball after half. I feel like our offense was getting on a kind of a roll. That was a little momentum shift that we needed. Um, I feel like the defense was we weren't playing great, but we were we were, ha were playing enough um, to keep to keep us into the game. Um, I feel like we kept the ball in front of us. We weren't having shots over our head. Um, we were getting good pressure on the quarterback. I just feel like our third down conversion percentage, uh, we weren't getting them off. We weren't getting off the field for third downs, and we were just having little dink and dimes here and there that just kind of you know breaks the will of the defense, if you would say. But I really liked how our, at that point our offense was being very competitive and trying to give us a chance to fight back into the game. So I think it was just, you know, we need to have better complimentary football as well on both sides. You know, that's, that's the way to tire out a defense, you know, those long drives. You go, you know, five, ten-minute drives almost, and it feels like you're just on the field for so long, kind of sort of losing pace. Every call starts kind of mixing into each other, and then we get them in third and long. We kind of get our nickel out there feeling pretty confident because that's a, that's a package that we really, really strive and do well in. And for them, you complete that, move the chains. It kind of starts to cycle over again. It gets very, very repetitive. Um, so it really wasn't a great feeling, uh, but there's something that we need to work on, especially if we want to compete in this league, because quarterbacks are going to make those throws. Um, Travis, or Trevor Lawrence is one of the best quarterbacks in not only our league, but the country, but the throws he's making is not so that other quarterbacks can't make those throws. Um, we got to be able to prepare for those throws and um, just get off the field. Get off the field, get the offense, get field position, and just play complimentary football again. No, we. Yeah, I mean, just comes to my mind. We had a you know cover two call, and then we had a little. Um, I think it was on the other side of me, but a corner post action. And we're just having leverage mis leverage and assignment issues and having them catch the ball, converting a 15-yard pass. I think I think of another one where like we're covering all downfield and they drop it off on a check down. And then ETN just makes a big play out of that, get, hits the first. Um, I just feel like a lot of things that we had, we were there, we had our opportunity. We were in the right spaces, right places. We were not just um, competing at a high enough level to stop them. Um, I don't think they over like dominated us, dominated us. I think it was a dog fight um, to the very end. Honestly, I don't think our guys gave up. Uh, but the third down conversions definitely um, put us set us back a lot. Uh, I don't know if I, it's not a percentage question, but I would just say um, immense, immense gap change. I mean, you look at it from last year, I think they had like put 66 up on us to this year, um, staying in the forties and, but the game was closer. You could tell that the, you know, we were still in the game. We were trying, making plays. Um, it wasn't where you would just kind of turn the TV off and or look for another game. It was kind of an interesting game. I feel like our, we were really, really competing um, to the very end, honestly. And our, the guys on the sideline, we were still so into the game, trying to uh, encourage the guys. I don't think anyone was down. Everyone was sad about the loss, but everyone was very, very confident coming in that we were going to win this game. Our preparation for this pa up or last week um, was very good. Everyone was very concentrated and focused. But sometimes it just takes a little bit more than just film work and practice to really correlate that to the game. Um, but strides we made versus Clemson, I really do think we made big strides um, and really shortened the gap. Even though we're not as good as them, they're a superior team, I think that we're, we're getting to that type of play.